Hello, welcome back to Alderman Farms. We're here, <laughs> yay, we made it. I'm glad you made it too. <laughs> Go ahead and give you a word of warning. I've, I experienced some uh, technical difficulties. Hello, Oops. welcome back to Alderman Farms. I hate Sorry hearing myself. Yeah. <laughs> we had some technical difficulties right before showtime, so we'll see. I hope, uh, I hope we're able to stay on for the duration. Yes, I hope so. I've got plans. Yep, and to make one of our favorite breakfasts tonight. Yep, and favorite breakfast as supper dishes. Yes, that's right. right. We we have this for supper sometimes because it's a nice filling supper. So I'll tell you so. what, we're fixing to get right to that. Yes. With a little bit of housekeeping. Um, for the sake of those who tuned in because the title says tomato gravy and biscuits um we're gonna get that done right up front and yep. get um, on. so if you have comments or questions not related to the tomato gravy and biscuits uh, we'd ask if you if you could hold those till that portion of the show is is completed mm -hmm. but by all means if you have questions uh, about the tomato gravy gravy and biscuits fire away and we hope uh, we really should have done some videos leading up to this because what we hope is that you've got the ingredients in front of you yes. to make tomato gravy and biscuits and you can make it right along with Patty. So with that, yeah. it's all yours, dear. <laughs> okay. Um, first off, we're going to start the tomato gravy um, because it takes a little bit longer. You want it to cook a little bit longer. So, But I am going to go ahead and turn my oven on 425 for the biscuits later. Not for the tomato gravy. So I've got my oven on preheat up to make sure nothing's in there uh, on 425. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do tomato gravy. We're going to actually... You ready for me to adjust yeah, the camera? You can turn that down. We're going to add a fourth of a cup of oil. Oil. Did I say it wrong? I'm going to add that in there. And I'm going to be perfectly honest, I made tomato gravy yesterday to see the amounts because I usually don't measure this. This is something I just do. All right, so there's my oil. And let's see what that is. That's a third of a cup. And half of a, four, a, half, half, of a half of a cup is a fourth of a cup, right? So I'm going to put that in there. Um one thing you know so it's equal amounts in other words um if you're if you're dieting like i have been you could use half of the amount of oil half of the amount of flour and that'll cut down on your calories um i like a good heavy roux taste and so i have made it while we were dieting you might need to stop there you said you like a heavy what roux r-o-r-o-r-o-u-x and if you don't know what a roux is, you might need to Google that. Roux, R-O-U-X. Anyway, it's a uh, you know, it's just flour and oil. It's it usually equal amounts, but I've noticed that uh, earlier it was a little oilier, uh, like more oil floating on the top. If it's like that, you can always add a little bit more flour. But we're gonna go with it just like this, <laughs> half and half. What? Oh, I'm watching the live closed captioning, and it ain't even close. Oh. I thought I thought you was going to tell me it wasn't going right now. Yeah. All right, now anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and put this on the stove. And let's see, on my stove burner, I have to blow it to make it come on sometimes. There it is. The gas man taught me that trick. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and that's I've got it on medium. That is a fire-breathing dragon. <laughs> I have it on medium right now um, to get it going. And you've got to watch a roux really close. It will burn really, really fast. Um, Do we plan on catching anything on fire in the oven? No, we don't plan on catching anything. I don't plan on that. Now, I'm not saying it won't happen, Oh, but I don't I think plan that's, on that's that. That's how Mike and Tara get a lot of their views. They yeah. set things on fire inside yeah. the oven. I don't want to do that. All right, now, I have already cut up my onion and this oh it's really burning out bad you can't tell what that is okay there it is this is about a half of a cup of onion or about a half of an onion and i have it diced you want to go ahead and have that ready to go in once your roux is ready so um 
Now, I'm, once I get my onions in there, sauteing, Tommy's not being a good camera. I'm sorry, what you want me to do? Just turn it up. Um, once my roux uh, gets to the right color, then I'll add the onions in. Once you add the onions, it makes the roux quit browning. And then um, it may brown a little bit more, but it won't keep cooking it. So, but I'm just gonna keep a watch on my roux and keep stirring it um, right now. So, and then I'll mix up my biscuits when we, uh, when the roux is ready, when I add the onions in. So right now, I guess we can look at some pictures while we're waiting on the roux and we can switch back and forth and show them. We've got a lot of pictures cause we've got a lot of ketchup to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, with, uh, I hadn't pl I forgot about this kind of downtime of while the roux is yeah. getting ready. So. so anyway, but, um, we've got a lot, a lot of pictures. Um, uh, I don't. I think I put. We had we had snow, y'all. It snowed here already. Can we you believe it? We don't have it? any snow pictures. I had put a snow picture. I didn't see a snow picture. I did I get this picture though. Oh yes, the beautiful red birds. I counted fifteen at one time. They all just showed up. I mean, it just en masse. There were just so many of them. That is um, amazing. Oh, I thought I put our snow picture. Well, anyway, our snow consisted of a few little flurries and uh We but, survived. But yeah, we survived. Thankfully. But I was so shocked. I was so very shocked. Um All right. Uh let's see. Kind of point the camera down a little bit. I'm going to pull this pot over there and just show them this right quick. I just want to show them how it's kind of bubbling up. Oh, and by the way, this is uh all-purpose flour you see it's kind of just bubbling up starting to cook and you see it start sticking to the bottom and you just want to kind of scrape that as it's as it cooks like that so okay this is not rehearsed I have no idea when I'm supposed to do what with the camera there you go I'm gonna be hitting him move it move it anyway and I'm cooking this a little fast but I want to go ahead and get it done Hopefully I won't have to start over. But if you end up burning your roux, it smells really bad when it's burned. It smells really good if it's not burned. But if you burn yeah, it, it then good. it's not that much wasted. It's just flour and uh, oil. So. Roux is the secret ingredient mm -hmm. to so many Cajun dishes and Louisiana dishes. Yep, it is. Um, hey, let's go ahead and tell them now, and we'll tell them again too. That uh, And I cannot, forgive me, I can't remember which viewer it was. But they asked, and if you're on there, right. please tell me. Um, Having technical difficulties with the stream, so you, bear with us. Um, about uh, last year, we actually um, got people to send us pictures and uh, tell us what you sell and what you make and everything. And so we want to do that again this year. Um, starting next week. Yeah, starting next week. Next Thursday, we're going to actually be premiering uh, different stuff that Promoting. people... Promoting yeah we're going to premiere and promote not necessarily if it's ever been seen anywhere it's not a premiere well, well i have something to premiere yeah you have something to premiere okay i'm going to be premiering i'm going to tell y'all about it tonight too but um anyway so you know we would love to help you out there's nothing in it for us we don't want to cut we don't want a commission nothing like that we just want to display if you and send an email to christmas i'll tell them what to do oh okay time to tell you what to do uh, he's so good at telling people what to do, huh? Sure. <laughs> That's my department, huh, baby? Yeah. I don't get to do it very often, so. Oh, oh. I smelled the roof. I smell the roof. So here's the deal. Whenever, uh, if you make anything, and I made a Facebook post about this on the Alderman Farms Facebook page, and I think I shared it into our Friends of Alderman Farms Facebook group. Um, but if you make anything that would be a great Christmas gift, then what I want you to do is to send an email to christmas at aldermanfarms.net. Christmas at aldermanfarms.net. And in the email, I want you to send me good photographs of whatever it is that you make. Um, and it don't have to be one thing. If it's a few things, that's fine, too. Of yeah. course, we can't take up the whole show. With yeah, don't, person, don't send me a hundred things, you know, but uh, you can give me some sample things and feel free to tell me that there's more variety available. Yeah. So I need, I need, let's put it this way, some quality photos of some sample items that you make. Uh, I need to have good descriptions. You don't have to write a novel, but good descriptions of the items. And I need links. If you've got an online store, uh, give me that. If you've got a business email, 
you know, however, however it is that you do business with your homemade, uh, handmade items, send me that in an email to christmas at aldermanfarms.net. And what we'll do is we'll start beginning next week highlighting. We want to help you guys and also provide uh, Merry Christmases for people who receive the things that you make. Yeah, and like, like I said, we did this last year, and Tommy got a lot of my Christmas gifts from the the, the, the different ones, and it was just so neat. He did a good job. Yeah, it was just so It makes neat. my Christmas shopping easy. <laughs> You know, it was really neat getting getting things made from different people we know and even from people we really didn't know. And so what so. I'm probably going to do, here's something else I'm going to do for you guys. Because we like to help people who are out there doing things like this. Is I'm going to probably, this is a surprise to Patty, part of it is a surprise. I'm probably going to make a permanent page on our website. Oh, good idea. Uh, I was going to make a page called Christmas, but I don't know what I'll name it. I'll figure that out. But yeah. it'll probably be a permanent page on our website that will have all the links that, that I, I got an idea what you call it what stuff our friends make yeah stuff I, well I don't know it may not be that easy okay. because uh, I that, bet you, hey you know what I bet you they can figure out a cool name no I can do that uh, it used to be whatever I named it that was the URL aldermanfarms.net oh. slash stuff our friends make oh. Um, but we'll figure that out. But I'm going to have, so, so people throughout the year will be able to go to our webpage, our website, find that page, and, and all your stuff will be Yeah, and they'll click the link, there. it'll go away from our page and bring them to whatever. But yep. anyway, let's show them how the room is looking now. All right. Now, I made shrimp and corn soup yesterday, day before yesterday, and this is about how you want the roux for shrimp and corn soup, but I want it darker for tomato gravy, and like if you were making a gravy, you'd want it darker. I want it darker than this Gosh, anyway. that smells it amazing. It smells so good, and when you put the onions in, it really smells good. But you do have to watch it very, very close. All right. So. So, Christmas at aldermanfarms.net. That's where you need to send those emails. Yes. So that'll be cool, and um, but we, you know, we really have, we didn't have, we didn't have real snow. We had a snow flurry, just only a, one. Yeah, just that a I little saw. piddling snow flurry. But um, we did have a very hard freeze, and y'all, it's so weird well, for it to be. We didn't so, have a very hard freeze. For us, we did. It was twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. That's not a hard freeze for here. Well, this time of year. Yeah, okay. that's this right. Time of year, we, it was a hard freeze for November, we for might, early we, November. We might get a 32 here and there if we have that in November, but it has been so cold. But for all my Michigan and Virginia friends, it hasn't been y'all's kind of cold. The wind was not beaten. Through. No, but it felt like it. Yeah, it was cold. It was cold. So um, we had to harvest. I had to harvest. Tommy was out of town, and so I went out. I had still a lot of peppers and stuff. You want to show them those pictures, Tommy, of the harvest that I got? Yeah. So I picked everything, big and little, no okra, but um. Squash. Yep, we got some. That, that, well, that's out of the high tunnel. That's actually. out of the high tunnel. Okay, that's these are the not. These are. Look at that, y'all. Oh, well, how do you say it? This Paul is the poblano. Oh, they're, I had to look them up. I forgot what kind of pepper it is. They are gorgeous. Poblano. P-O-B-L-A-N-O. They are so pretty. And the white eggplants yes. behind them. Yeah, and then the look how egg. pretty these are. Yes. I picked I picked green and red. That's my cayenne peppers. So uh, I'm so glad I got out there and did it. And that's uh, that's almost a gallon of jalapenos and banana peppers. Did you do it because you, you knew it was coming? Yeah, I knew the freeze was coming. I knew it would be no good. And then that's snap beans out of the high tunnel. I, my biggest harvest out of the high tunnel has been four gallons of green beans off of one row. And so that was two that I picked. And this, Tommy, huh. Tommy had to go out last night with his headlamp on to get those spaghetti squash. That was a volunteer that just came up out in front of the trailer. And so um, he ran out and got those for me last night. So Jan Partain said, did your peppers uh, revive from transplant shock? I guess that's the, the, some of the bush we planted in the high tunnel. You know, I didn't get a picture of that. Oh. Yeah, it, it's living, but it don't look great, so, okay, and then, yeah, okay. But anyway, so that was a nice little harvest, and honestly, I haven't dealt with any of it, so I've got to do that. Okay, I want to show them the room. Oh, wait, I was showing them this picture. Oh, isn't that good? We've got our fire going. Yeah, and Tootsie's over there now, too, not just Sugar Bear. 
Okay, um, all right, let's look at the roux. Again, it's nice and brown. It could be a little bit darker. I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions in. Um, you know what? I, 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 I hold that, please. I might want to lick it. Ooh, I better not, because it's, it's hot. It's hot. See, the onions are sizzling. Oh, and see, that smells so good, Oh my gosh, I, I wish there was smell know. vision. And you just kind of stir them around, get them coated, and I'm going to turn my fire down on low. And I'm going to put the lid on this, and I'm going to let them saute. And they'll get nice and tender. Sorry so. about how loud oh, those sorry. little dings are. Oh, it smells so good. I'm okay. going to tell you something. If you grew up in Louisiana, that is one of the favorite smells, and it is filled with mem with memories. That is a very nostalgic yeah. smell, the smell of a room. It really is. All right, let's show them let's show them our plants. I'll get to I'll make the biscuits next, but let's show them the plants um inside or out. No, outside what the freeze did to them. Why I hurried up and picked everything. There's our beautiful hibiscus that we planted on top of Pete's grave that has just grown and man, it was just gorgeous. I didn't know it was going to die back. I kind of thought it was an evergreen. I don't know. I don't do flowers. Dead so. as a hammer after the freeze. Hopefully so, it lives. There's a distant shot or far away, a far back shot of the okra. There's some close-up shots of the, the okra. okra. I mean, it just it just just that one freeze. It's just all fall. I mean, yeah, and this it, they look like they've been dead for a week. Yeah, that's peppers. More, that's more peppers. More yeah. peppers. The mint made it. Yeah, and I'm so glad he got that picture. I didn't realize the mint made it through the summer, actually. I'm so glad. I'm going to get it in the high tunnel. And the comfrey. The comfrey looks amazing. We're um, fixing to break that up and, and do some transplanting. Yeah, I'm gonna, I am gonna. think I'm going to break that up into four and uh, plant it over in the area by the high tunnel because that's the area that we're going to have things that um, are perennial. I didn't, I didn't take a picture of our orchard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, we're going to do that around the high tunnel because we're never going to allow animals over there. And so once we get the comfrey dug, hopefully we do that tomorrow, we're going to let the goats in the garden and let them start cleaning that up for us. So The old garden, yeah. The old garden, yeah. All okay. Right. we got time for high tunnel stuff or are you ready to move? Yeah, let's go ahead and I'm going to show them how I mix up the biscuits All right, right quick. Ready for the camera down low? Yep. All right. So, and oh, I want to tell y'all too. This recipe is actually taken from Dining on a Dime. Mike's recipe in here, it's on page 54. Mike's Baking Powder Biscuits. I've tweaked it just a little bit. Um, but uh, If you don't have one, there's a link in the description. Yes. You can go get it. I love my living, living on a Dime book. But anyway, um, so it is two cups of flour, and you're going to want to sift it. Oh wait, I'm gonna put, I'm, and I'm gonna do a cup of white and a cup of whole wheat. You can do whatever you prefer. You can do all white. I do all white for mama a lot of times, but I'm gonna do wheat. And this is my Wheat Montana Farms. This is prairie gold flour. And also, I was gonna tell you too, I'm trying to tell you, cause we've been dieting too, so that's on my mind. Um, you can actually cut back on the butter that I'm going to be putting in here um, if you wanted to, if you wanted to cut back where there are not as many calories. And you don't have to put the sugar at all. This is where mine differs from Mike. I put uh, two tablespoons of sugar. And I also put a whole tablespoon of baking powder. He doesn't put quite as much baking powder as I do. Sorry about the lighting, guys. We need to get that fixed. What's the light? The shadows? No, oh, it's, it's just burning, it's out. burning out. And oh. Okay. Michael okay. Cullen's going to see that and fuss at me. Salt. we got to get, yeah, we need something. All right, and it's a one teaspoon of salt. So that was two cups of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, and a teaspoon of salt. 
Now, and I like, I don't know why, but I like to mix with a, a fork. But I got to sift this first. And this is just, uh, you could use a regular sifter. I just prefer to do this. She likes getting it on the counter. Yeah, I was going to say, I like making a mess because I just did. She also likes to make loud noises. Sorry, y'all. So, then that's done. And then I like to mix it around a little bit to make sure my ingredients are mixed. You can kind I can kind of see, I don't know if you can, that my white flour and my wheat flour wasn't real mixed together. I also like to do baking, uh, uh, oh my goodness, buttermilk biscuits too. And if you do buttermilk biscuits, put like a fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda. And I actually started doing buttermilk biscuits for us dieting because there's not as many calories in buttermilk as there is in milk. I actually uh, cut this recipe down to the ha a half, a half as much butter. This uh, recipe calls for four tablespoons of butter. And I had cut that back to two tablespoons when I say when, when I was dieting. But we're still dieting to a certain extent, but um, we're, we're eating. We've got our appetites have gotten under control, so we don't have to have as many uh, snacks so we can have more calorie meals. That's the way I feel about it anyway. Yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, you could be using, a, a, is it a pastry blender, I think, to do this. I just Don't like me. using my fork. I'm going to stir my roux right quick. Mm. But anyway, I just smush that butter in like that. And my goal right now is getting my biscuits made up while my onions are cooking. And... You know, sometimes I don't always put onions in there. I go straight into making the uh, tomato gravy if I'm in a hurry because it does take a little longer. What? Jamie says she's on her way. Jamie McCullough? Yep. Jamie McCullough says she's <laughs> on her way, one of her all-time favorites. Yep. But, Jamie, I've changed my recipe a little bit. Um, uh, you'll see in just a minute I'll put... Uh, tomato sauce and tomato paste in there. I started doing that to make it go further with having all the kids and it does change the flavor. And so, um, I make it a little bit different than I what the way I grew up eating it. So, okay. Now I have that kind of crumbly and everything. Uh, the butter mixed in pretty good. Facebook peeps, I've missed some comments. I'm having trouble with Facebook on my iPad. Okay. Uh, so for Let me example, say that right quick. This you put in about a cup of milk, but I'm just and I do it a little bit at a time. But it's it, it's about equal about a cup of milk. Go ahead, baby. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, Barbara Collins Hertzberg asks, "What color are you looking for in your roux, Barbara?" I don't know if uh, I know. Patty did talk about the color of the roux, so let me know if she answered that for you already. Um, uh, Galinda Wright said, I missed your cooking videos. Well, we've got good news for you, Galinda. Yep. Patty's going to be cooking a lot on our... Yeah, we'll try, we're going to try and do... Either on our regular Thursday shows or some or separately. Some during the week, yeah. Some during the, during, uh, else during the week. I do find also when I've made my um, buttermilk biscuits that if they, I actually make more biscuits um, when I do the buttermilk. And I don't know if it's because it's thicker and it goes further or something. I don't know. But what I'm doing is I'm just mixing this in and as it pulls apart, I don't want it too wet. Sometimes I get it too wet and then I just have to add a little, I just have a more moist biscuit and I have to add more flour to it. And I think I got it a little too moist just now. Annie says she'll be over soon. Yep, that's what's she, for supper. She's going to get Jamie's biscuit. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm going to leave this sit for a minute. Um, Tommy, go over there and get my uh, biscuit pan thing from over there for me. All right, Facebook friends, uh, Facebook has crashed on my iPad, so I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna, not going to be able to see any... Uh... You can't open it back up? No, I can't. Oh, okay. What, baby? My bake, my uh, biscuit pan. Okay, now. Where is it? It's hanging on the wall up under my coat right there. All right, I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna move this to the side. And I think this will work. Let me just move this out the way just in case. No, no, baby, put it over here. Well, I wanted them to see it. Oh. Where do you want it? 
like right here is fine. Okay. All right, here is my roof. And who, what was the lady on Facebook asking the color? Um, Barbara, I think. I just, I would, I would, I would call this a medium brown roux. Um, it's not a super dark roux. Really? Yeah. I mean, I've had them darker than this. Yeah, I don't but know. But it's nice and dark. But um, anyway, then first I add my tomato paste in here where it'll get mixed up good. Oh, and it's uh, the small can, the six ounce can of tomato paste. Could this biscuit recipe be used for chicken and dumplings? Oh, yes. Um, in fact, where I have it right here, the uh, texture I have of it, it's kind of moist right there. That's the way I would use it for my chicken and dumplings. Yes, Peaceful Inspirations, it is a cast iron biscuit pan. Yes, I love it too. I wanted you to put a link to that down there. Uh, the tomato paste is a little hard to mix in when there's a lot of liquid in there, so that's why I put the tomato paste in first and get it mixed in my roux. And then you'll add one big can of tomato sauce, 15 ounces it says. Hey Red Duchess, I get it. I can't do but one thing at a time either. He can't type. No time to type. He's eating dinner. <laughs> We're getting our dinner ready. Our, our breakfast for supper ready. Yep, our breakfast for supper. All right, then you want to just mix that up good. You see that's lumpy. So you just want to try and mix that in really good. And then I add about a half a can of water. A half of the large can. Yeah. And I swish it around. And that's probably, let's see, this is about a half a cup, actually. <clears throat> and I pour that in there. Now, I told you I do mine a little bit different than I did growing up. We used to just use tomato sauce. And to make it go further, I started adding the tomato paste. Um, it does change the taste a little bit because tomato paste is a little bit sweeter than tomato sauce. And so um, it does change the taste a little bit, but um, I've gotten used to it, and this is the way I like it now. Now, here in Mississippi, I really don't know how they make it. I know they do a roux and they do tomato sauce and stuff. But do they people in Mississippi eat that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. They've actually put milk in it. And so I've never, I don't really care for it like that because this is what I grew up with. And I don't think they do quite as heavy of a roux, at least when I've had it, um, when I've eaten it, that's how it's been. Okay, now I'm going to put this back on the stove and put the lid on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, biscuits ready. You doing that here? Yep, right here. You don't, you can leave it like that. And this is my dirt cheap find. I forget how much I paid for them, but Not much. they were cheap. They were cheap. Okay, now there is my dough. And you see, somebody asked about if I could, they could use this for dumplings. Not everybody makes dumplings out of biscuit dough. Oh, and if you were talking about rolled dumplings... No, this would not work good for rolled dumplings. I don't. I don't think. So who was I don't that? know. Albany Mountain Homestead. Were you talking about uh, like the the kind of dumplings that you roll out and cut squares, or are you talking about drop dumplings? Yeah, uh, I, I make dumplings um, with my biscuit dough, but I actually uh, take spoonfuls of it and drop it on the uh, on the counter. I mean, on the counter <laughs> in the pot. So uh, that's how I do my uh, dumplings. And I may have put a little too much flour on this. And I don't usually take out the rolling pin to do this because it's so fast to so just pat it out with your hands. And since we're watching what we eat, I have this wonderful, wonderful biscuit cutter that Tommy got from 7D Farms yep. from Sherry and Les I would from me last year. That the link will be on our page when we get it set up for yep. Christmas ideas. And, um, but I'm not using that tonight because it makes a very large biscuit. And so I'm using this old one that I have. This, and, and sometimes I usually get about 12 biscuits and, um, sometimes 14. It just depends. Oh, I forgot. So yes, Albany Mountain Homestead what for I, drop dumplings, it works 
Fine. What I do is I put this in the in the um, oven and let it get hot because it makes a nice crisp biscuit if you do that on the bottom. But I should have had it in there sooner. Music Well wants to know, could they use homegrown canned tomatoes in place of the sauce without any issue? Yes, uh, I have a friend that that's what her mother did, is they did, they did tomatoes like that. Now, I personally don't want mine with tomato pieces in it like that, but there, if, you, if you like tomatoes and all, a lot of people do make them like that. In fact, uh, I remember my mama making it like that one time when my sister and brother-in-law were home. Uh, and they loved it, but I didn't care for it because I want that that smooth, more of a smooth texture, you know. But uh, yes, you can do it like because that. Because part of this dish is nostalgia. Nostalgia, that's right. And I was like an only child, so Mama probably cooked it how she knew she could get me to eat it. So <laughs> I didn't eat very good when I was little. And so I've just thrown my dough back in here, and I'll just kind of push it together. Yeah, Music Well said, yeah, I'll take seeds, I'll take it, seeds and all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, could run them through the blender, all the Mountain Homestead said. Yep. And I mean, you know, I, sh I should do it like that because it, it would be much better for me, for us, you know. And oh, I've got the tomatoes. It ain't going to kill us to eat these memories like this. <laughs> all righty, there's my biscuits. Lemonade Farm, I, I got your question there, and we'll come back to it uh, when we get finished with all this. Okay, now there's that. The only problem about doing it like this over here, I don't have anything to put something hot on. And you know what? Go look. Well, I washed all my uh, my uh, hot things. My uh, hot <laughs> I washed orders? them today. I did. Can you move that computer up a little bit? I'm going to burn it. Okay. So, I'm going to take this out. Do you want me to go see? Or they're, they're in the washing machine? They're like, no, they're in the dryer, but that's okay. I'll use this as dish towel and hopefully not burn it. I'll try not to touch it. It shouldn't be that awful hot right now. No. I, I like to, but when I start making up my biscuits, I like to stick my pan in there. Um, you want to turn the camera a little bit to the pan? And so, I like to put, now, now, with us kind of dieting, I didn't do this because I'll grease my pan after I get through cooking on it. Um, I wouldn't put the spread this butter on there because y'all know butter's got a ton of calories. But anyway, we're not doing a diet recipe tonight. I do plan on doing some diet recipes, but this is not, I'm not doing it tonight. But anyway, you can put a little butter on there. Some healthier recipes. Well, I know, but I mean. Some lower calorie recipes. Lower calorie. Yeah, it's not lower calorie when you keep doing the butter. <laughs> I learned that. So, all right, now I got that done. Turn the convection on the oven. All right, I didn't. I haven't counted how many biscuits I made. Two, three. Well, nine, twelve. I think that might have made fourteen. I stagger mine. Yeah, I might have some sharp biscuits because I think I made quite a few. <laughs> I did. What about the galette? The galette? I got it. That's... I don't know how to pronounce that. Galette. That's an old, galette. An old, I mean, I'm sorry. I it's, don't know how to spell it. But what Patty's showing, showing you right now in Cajun parlance is the galette, the little piece of biscuit left over that doesn't quite make a full-size biscuit. Patty's mama calls that the galette. And she likes to get it. She likes to have the galette. Thank you, Nanda. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. She Baby, said we you? both look great. Look like Thank we've you. lost some Would you open the oven for me, please? Yep. Kind of got close quarters back here. And you're baking that at what? Did you talk about that? 425. What to do with the camera? Turn it up to us. We're done. We're done cooking? Oh, I got to set my timer. Oops. Okay. Mm. Tasting good. Anyway, so that's a quick meal. 
a quick quick meal and it's very filling too yeah it's only 7:35, so. and i think that was probably about 20 minutes and it probably took a little longer than it would then if i yeah if i wasn't talking about that she wasn't talking or anything yeah. so well yeah. none to mention the uh, said we both look great looks like we've Thank lost you. tons of weight so i wouldn't say tons not, but i've lost not exactly I've tons lost some. but i'll show you i don't have pictures patty's got pictures I took pictures. Well, I had happened to. I had gone out to eat like two days after I started uh, dieting, and that's that's it in the the first picture. And then, um, and I really, I, I don't, I don't know that I've lost any weight since that last picture was taken. Um, but I, I've lost. How, well, I, I took that other picture. Yeah, hang on, it's I'll Fifteen pits up at the top. Oh no, it's, it's not. right here. 15 pounds, but I think I've lost <clears throat> 16 pounds now. So it's kind of going slower. I'm. Um, eating a little more than I was um, really not been counting the calories as much because um, it's been you know I kind of know what to eat now and everything and there's Tommy but as of this morning I'm t down 23.4 pounds and uh, and y'all isn't that unfair he started after me and passed me up it's a man thing people have always said that and uh, and it's true it's true. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm enjoying feeling thin. You know, I haven't felt thin in, in a number of years. And, uh, of course, I'm, not, I'm still heavier than when I was doing P90X and all that. But as soon as my knee's completely healed, uh, I am yeah. going to get into P90X3. They have P90X3, which is 30 minutes a day because I want to do some toning. And uh, regarding the knee, it's better. Yeah, I ended up better. Uh, going to my going to the doctor. He confirmed Doctor Google's diagnosis that I had an <laughs> MCL injury, and I had something going on in the top of my knee, top of my kneecap in the front. It turns out that may have just been. Uh, uh, it may have been no, no, no. My family doctor thought maybe some tendonitis, which Doctor Google thought too, but <laughs> I, I, I doubted that because it was it didn't hurt prior to my event which was walking <laughs> just walking <laughs> i slept i stepped in a slightest of depressions it wasn't a hole and i heard a pop and anyway i didn't feel that in the top of my knee front of my knee for a few days but anyway so he sent me to a specialist and the specialist took an x-ray and uh he blessed me told me my knee looked like the knee of a 20 year old and that and that's a blessing because his mama had double knee replacement surgery so, yeah it was a blessing know, i was so, so glad to hear that he didn't do an mri the guy one of my, my my family doctor uses him and he said he's not knife happy he's not gonna you know cause me to spend money and all that unless it's absolutely necessary so he didn't even do an mri he gave me a shot with a needle about that long it mm -hmm. seemed like uh in uh, in my knee and said hey why don't we just watch it for two weeks because at the time it was already much improved and you know he said in a couple of weeks if you're still having problems if you want to come back we'll do an mri and uh and see but anyway he said the thing on the top of my knee the front of top of my kneecap in the front could have been meniscus related he said sometimes they go together uh, but it is improving i walked a mile today and i only felt minor discomfort almost at the end of the mile which is an improvement over the last time i sort of tested it and um, i was about a third of a mile in the last time when it started getting uncomfortable yeah so but I'm tommy's problem is he was, he was going to walk two miles today and i'm like i don't think that's a good idea you need to start slow and he listened halfway yeah halfway but i'm on a mission you know i'm ready to i'm ready to get thin and get healthy and um <clears throat> you know anyway anyway so peaceful inspiration says you can see it in our faces mm -hmm. yeah and uh lemon the lemonade farm said that they've been walking for an hour each morning husband's lost 10 pounds and she's lost maybe four so that's great, great. that's great peaceful inspirations i'm about five nine ish I, I i told patty i needed her to measure me yeah we both need to measure i'm almost five, i was i was almost five eight i was like five seven and three quarters yeah. but um I don't know if I'm that tall anymore, you know. Tell them we said, hey, Homestead Evolution. 
But anyway, um, so what was you saying that you was we were to address later? Was that what Nanda said, or was somebody else say no, something? No, it was about uh, uh, somebody had asked about my knee. Oh, for your knee, yeah. Yeah. So. And also, Tommy had a few little cysts removed too. He wanted to show you those pictures, but I told him he couldn't. <laughs> I had a couple of uh, sebaceous. Is that what they were called? I think so. Sebaceous cysts on the But I mean, back. one cut is like that long. Yeah, it ended up with nine stitches. So I pushed, yeah. I've pushed my my lead uh, in in the family for stitches. Even I've extended it even further. But I think the stitches from the dog attack put it put it well out of reach. Although Cameron did say he's a lot younger than me, so he's got time. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, I hope not. He's my got goodness. time to catch up. Uh, oh, my so goodness. all right. So we showed you pictures of. The vegetation and stuff outside of the high tunnel mm -hmm. after the freeze. Mm -hmm. How about we take a look at this stuff inside the high uh, tunnel? Let me just one, say one thing. While your biscuits are cooking, obviously the tomato gravy is just simmering in the pot. So, And I stir it every once in a while to make sure it's okay. All right. So we closed it up when it started consistently falling below 50 degrees. Uh, so it was like that for a couple of days ahead of the freeze, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was. And that was good because it trapped some heat in there. But here we go. Look at there. English peas. That's today. You saw yeah, what outside looked like today. And so that's what that looks like. Yeah. There's the, the sugar snap peas and the uh, Monica cucumbers. I got some close-up. I saw that uh, I took pictures of these leaves, mainly for Patty, on the cucumbers. I don't know what's up. I don't know if they... Well, I may have broke them or something. Or okay, the, you know, maybe so. Could. But look at this, y'all. Look at the... Y'all, I'm telling y'all, it's Monica Cucumber. Spell it, Tommy. M-O-N-I-K-A. Yes, I got them from Baker Creek Seed. Uh, the Pratts are grow, have grown those. And so, you know, they're, we're, we're two extremes. They're very north. We're very south. They grow great both places. They make amazing. And so fast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they grow great. You see these little bitty ones right there? Oh, let me, let me In about three days, they're going to look like, like that, you know. Uh, you can almost just sit there. If you sit real still and watch them grow it's uh it's absolutely crazy um these are what is this patty is that that's mustard pot? greens that's mustard greens yeah that's some mustard greens that i planted and i need to get out there and pick some more of it that's um cabbage it's not doing the best but it's okay i think it may make some look at those green beans they're doing great and that's kale. Now, you know, I had some stuff eat the kale, eat some of my brassicas or however you say it. But anyway, I had worms and stuff in there, but we had to spray a little bit. There's the tomatoes, and they are looking great. They have blooms all over them, but no little tomatoes yet. So I'm hoping, and these are some cold weather varieties. Of course, they don't last through the freeze, but I'm hoping by Christmas I'll get some tomatoes. And that's stuff I have yet to do. I never have planted my strawberry plants. And our beautiful bananas. And a little bit of lettuce. It's not the lettuce is not doing great, but I think it's still kind of warm during the day. And one one plant of parsley. What's this on that parsley row? Oh, I can't remember. It's may it may be uh, broccoli. Well, I had a picture or a Brussels of Brussels sprouts. I don't know what happened to I had a picture of the squash, but you I did. guess I guess it didn't come in. It doesn't come over. Yeah, we've got the, uh, um, about. No, I mean the plants. I 10, had a picture of the plants. Uh, squash plants in there, and I've been picking squash, but this is what's the crazy thing. It only takes two little squash for me and Tommy to have some to eat. It's really weird. You know, I've cooked for. Uh, see, Mama doesn't eat squash, but you know, we've had six. It's always been six of us, and then you know, four or five of us, and. Now, a lot of times it's just me and Tommy, and it's yeah. just really weird to try. Like, like this tomato gravy is way too much. Now, oh, hopefully, hopefully Carly Ann will come get some, but, you know. There'll be a good bit of that thrown out. No, I'm going to freeze it. I'm or frozen. It. Look at these uh, cucumbers, y'all. Look at them. Ain't they cute? I just love them. This is the refrigerator cucumbers that I used just the uh, ball. Refrigerator pickles. Yeah, what did I say? Cucumbers. cucumbers. But anyway, they... Uh, it's so good. This is Jenny's recipe? Uh-uh. 
No, it's just in the bottle book. Oh. No, they're kind of salty, huh? Woo! It's sour, too. <laughs> you don't like them, baby? No, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, but man, that, that almost took my breath away. They're pretty sour, aren't they? Yep. We've had, uh, oh, perfect timing with the freezing weather. We got some, uh, we've got some fuzzy little friends inside that we're having to keep warm. <laughs> We got some baby chicks. They're doing fine. We got a, this. Here's a good look at our, at yeah. our arrangement. I want to show you our redneck <laughs> rigging. Redneck rigging. We got two of them. We got the chicks are in here, but hey, look what we got in the other one. Our first quail. Yay! We got uh, AJ Farms. Yep, from AJ Farms, Anita and John at AJ Farms, and we are in the quail business. I can't wait. It is unbelievable that these little things, the moment if you start counting from the moment they hatch out of an egg, in six weeks they're gonna be laying their own eggs. Yep. Amazing. So we are absolutely tickled about quail and can't wait to see how that's gonna work out. Oh, you've already got the camera moved down. Yeah, I moved it down a little bit. It needs to be moved down a little bit more. Um, now, I could turn my pan and get some more even browning, but Tommy tends to like his biscuits not as brown. Me and Mama like ours more brown, so it works out perfect. Yep. And um, what I do with my biscuits, I, as soon as they come out the oven, I uh, butter them. Uh, everybody does things different. I guess I do it that way because I had the four kids and... Um, it was just easier. I just buttered all the biscuits. And so I still do that. And I just find they slice easier and everything. Yeah. So. These are good biscuits too. Yep. I really like them. I always used to buy, before I started making my homemade biscuits, I used to buy Pioneer Biscuit Mix. And I find these are very close to the Pioneer taste. Now I like these better actually. They are hot. Hot, hot, hot. Peaceful Inspirations, have you checked uh, Have you checked with the restrictions? Because quail may be allowed. I'm going to tell you, you something. you can keep them in small cages. I was thinking, you know, somebody that's just one person or two people, you could very easily, I think. Now, I haven't seen how big of a mess they make when they get bigger. But I don't see, you can keep parakeets in the cage why couldn't you keep quail in the cage inside i think it would work where there's a wheel there's a way i guess yep and so then well, i just over there, girls they fussing then i stick i guess that's about a teaspoon of butter on there but my knife's hot it's wanting to slide off i think jeff smells the biscuits jeff smelling the biscuits yeah jeff who Oh, that Jeff. Jeff. Homestead Dad. Jeff's head. Jeff's head smells the best. Jeff's gonna be over soon. What's funny about how Michael me, smells them too. About um, the biscuits. Um, me buttering them like this. Um, poor Cameron, my oldest. It would never fail. I would miss a biscuit, and he'd always get it. And he'd be like, "Why didn't you put butter on mine?" <laughs> I would always miss one. They they are pretty they're pretty quiet uh, as babies you know I mean when it's quiet in here they do you know they chirp and but y'all know how the upstairs is open it's a loft where our bedroom is and they're down in the living room and I'm a light sleeper and they don't wake me up so I don't know peaceful inspirations I mean I guess you could uh, process them in your backyard one at a time or something but um, yeah. I don't know. I just I would look into it though. I wouldn't assume. Yeah, because some places you can have rabbits in subdivisions and yeah. stuff. You know. Some in some places you can have like two chickens but no rooster or something like that. Or three you chickens. Know, so yep. Three chickens or. So I would just check, but but you could you know keep them for eggs too. Now they're not prolific egg layers. They're pretty good though. Right. Michael I don't remember. And Jenny. Yeah, yeah. They like to lay three hundred something eggs a year. Oh, do they? Yeah. 
Yeah. I couldn't remember. Yes. I'm just going to let y'all sit there and I salivate kinda, over them biscuits. I kind of had my tomato gravy cooking a little too fast, but it's okay. Yeah, the darker the better for me. Oh, it's not like it's dark. Huh? Yeah, reach in there and get the bark right behind you right there, please. Okay. And this is way you do it. You open your biscuit up like that. And you don't have to put butter to have tomato gravy biscuit, but it's all about that taste, you know. And normally what I do, I, I don't know if I want to, yeah, I might do it. Do what? Normally what I do is I get Turn the camera up. Uh, one biscuit like that and then a second biscuit with honey on it. Yeah, and I always fuss at him. I used to fuss at him and be like, it's not as, it's not as fattening if you just eat the tomato gravy. But then after I learned, oh, you just got it on me. After I learned about uh, stuff, star. and I'm like, uh, I think honey was, would be about the same. So we'll have to let that cool off a few minutes. <laughs> it is very hot. I'm going to set this over here out the way. What you looking for? I'm looking for a plate. Oh, you're going to have some too? Yeah. I thought we would share that. Well, no? uh, yeah, but I, I want one. I mean, you want honey? Well, we can wait till after the nose to eat. We could. <laughs> You've been rude. Well, i gotta, um, I got to let mine cool off. Yeah, it is kind of hot. Ow! He don't, he don't usually cook, so he burns his hands easy. Um, seemed like, oh, there are some pictures that I want to show you, too. Uh, and Tomas had FaceTimed us right before we were starting the show, and so we told him we were going to be showing some pictures of him, too. And so let me show you. We had, we've had we've been really busy, um, and I've been doing a lot of stuff with Tomas, and so I hope the pictures came through that I shared, I gave to Tommy to put up here. Yeah, I got some pictures and some videos of it. Oh, and you know, we've had his birthday, and y'all saw some of those videos and everything, but here is his big birthday party with his friends. So they had him at his uh, mom had his party at his mom's gym, and it was they they all had a fun fun time. This, see, this is how I do it. One with honey, one with tomato gravy. All right, let's see. We got some some more Tomas stuff while this stuff. Uh, yeah, while it cools, cools off. Cools down. So this was this was hilarious. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Then there's his. Came out and it just fell right out. It was in it. Now my tooth won't hurt when I'm playing football at my birthday party. <laughs> and it won't fall right out. <laughs> <laughs> so he got his tooth out finally, but I tell you it was hanging by a thread and he would not he wouldn't let any of us get close to it or put our hands in his mouth. He was scared we're gonna pull mm -hmm. it out. Let's see. I got, uh... I'm gonna take a bite. I'm gonna take it back. Go ahead. So, they had a fall That's festival good. at his school, and mm -hmm. we got the pleasure of taking him. Yes. And he went as Barry Allen, the, the Flash. Flash. Um, also, we got to help him with a school project. <laughs> and it's funny, people all over the country had this, con this project, because I've seen folks yeah. post what they what they did with the project but mm -hmm. they had a picture of a turkey and they had to disguise the disguise turkey. Disguise the turkey, yeah. And uh, so Tomas decided he would he would disguise his turkey as a dog. So Sugar Bear needed a trim. <laughs> I did. We did. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so Tomas says, turkey is disguised as a dog with Sugar Bear's hair glued on the picture. <laughs> it wasn't easy getting that hair to stick, I can tell you. All right. Now, I've told you all before, my, my grandson's a genius, but he's also a world-class athlete. Right. Now, this kid is seven years old. Just turned seven mm -hmm. years old. I, I got some videos I can show you when he was 18 months that would blow your mind. But it's incredible the athletic ability he has. Watch this seven-year-old. Notice the form. That was a bad one. He can play better than I can, easily. <laughs> and I wish we had the one where he, he, he there's another one where he does backhands too you know he yeah. does forehands and backhands and his form is just amazing speaking of form watch this this is what I thought he was showing you watch this <laughs> I just love how both feet come up off the ground like that and that's if you can't see all the way to the right is uh, goal posts that we've made out of PVC pipe, and we've had those what a year or so, yeah, and, uh, or maybe longer. And but uh, he I'm was gonna, so tickled, he made like five or six field goals. I'm gonna show that one again. I, I won't play the whole thing, but watch it again. Boom! Watch his back leg come up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that. Yeah, Corey noticed it, and he was like, "Man, his, you know, he knows how to use his, his momentum, and it brings that other leg right up, you know." So, pretty crazy. Hey, we're just about out of time, so Are we? we do need to remind you to when you leave here, oh, go to the Pratt Family Homestead. The link to yes. their channel is in uh, the description of this video. They are supposed to be on tonight. Well, hey, Blue, you can't oh. have my biscuits, Blue. You can't have my biscuits. Can't, I can't. Even. Blue, come here. Come here. Here, here. He came in with Carly Ann. Yeah. He's cold. Um, yes. Go to Pratt Family Homestead. And hey, we've got 71 with us here, Nanda said. Wow, very nice. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you all very so, much. So. I got something I got to say, too. Go ahead. And then remember, I'll give him a quick a, reminder. Because I have a premiere. You do have a premiere. Now, we told y'all about, um, if you have, and, and you know, even if it's somebody that doesn't typically watch our show or whatever, if you're somebody you know, you know, put it out there. Share our post about um, the Christmas. Um, people send us, us, us information about the Christmas and everything. You can find that post on Facebook. Yeah, it's on Facebook. Uh, we'd be glad for, for, you know, just to share, you know, with everybody and all. But one thing we're doing that's different, you know, we have uh, our my sourdough start to finish cookbook, and we and I also have the 20 easy instant pot recipes. Um, we have not sold these paperback little books that I have uh, on the internet. We've only sold them at conferences, and we have some left from the conferences we've been to, and so we're gonna be offering them for sale. Um, starting next Thursday, I have to go and see. I think I'm going to do a bundle with the sourdough and sourdough starter, or just the book, or and then maybe all three, the two books and sourdough starter. Um, I'm not, not sure the cost of it yet because I have to go find out about shipping. I think it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be able to use media mail, and so the shipping is going to be a little bit different because I only charge you what it costs me to ship it so anyway i wanted y'all to know about that that we're we've decided to do that it's a limited supply though i need to count up and see how many we have it's not that many of each one but uh we are going to offer them for sale for at for christmas starting thanksgiving so, so if you've got something to sell for christmas remember send an email to christmas at aldermanfarms.net include photos of samples items <laughs> Don't send me a hundred. I can't do that. Uh, just pick a couple if you make a bunch of things. Pick the best ones, the prettiest ones. Send me a link or contact information or whatever, how, how people can reach you to purchase your products. Mm -hmm. And uh, send that to Christmas at AldermanFarms.net. And starting next Thursday, uh, hopefully by the end, we'll have a web page, uh, a page on our website to list everything. And we'll promote it on the show. 
most of our show will be that. Yes, yes. And uh, oh yeah, I'm thinking about making shrimp creole, creole. next week. Right, we'll be so, cooking yeah. shrimp creole live. And, and we're gonna next do week. we're gonna just like we did this show. We're gonna start cooking at the very beginning to get the cooking part done, where we'll have time and everything. Yeah. And so, um, and I want to say special thank you for Nanda for being here and being our moderator. Thanks, Nanda. And I don't know if anybody else is on. And uh, y'all, I'm sorry if we didn't answer any questions. Um, uh, it's been it's not been easy. My computer's over there, and I haven't been able to see the uh, Plus questions. Plus, we're out good. of practice. Yeah, we're out of practice too. Um, and it's eight o'clock. It's time for the prats. So, Nunda, you go make you some biscuits. Y'all see see y'all next Thursday yeah. or before. Next Thursday or before. Thanks, guys.